Okay. All right. Hallelujah. Anyone know why uh, koala bears don't hang out with other bears? They don't qualify. <laughs> Amen. There was, <laughs> there was this farmer one, this farmer family, and they were having dinner and uh, our supper. And uh, the salesman would come every week. He would show up at supper time. And so one day he comes to the door, and and uh, and uh, the la- the mother and the wife answers the door and says, "Oh, we're just having supper right now." He's, "Oh, I caught you at a bad time," and uh, he was expecting an invitation. And she said, "You're welcome to join us and uh, for supper." And uh, he's, "What are you having?" He, she said, "Well, cow's tongue." And uh, he kind of looked at her and said, yeah, no, I know where that's been. I'm not interested in that, uh, but thank you so much. And uh, she said, well, she said, I could cook you an egg. (laughs) Anybody know where eggs come from? (laughs) Anyway, praise the Lord. Come on, give the Lord a hand this morning. Not for my jokes, but how about just for the Lord? Well, like I said, I'm excited to be here. I was, was, um, you know... uh, there have been a couple of changes in my life. <clears throat> my eyes have uh, kind of somewhat decreased for some reason, uh, and I haven't been able to read with my machine. So in saying that, which has brought my wife to uh, be able to help me a lot more than she has in the past, and so we study together now. Amen? So I think that's a great thing. So um, it's, it's causing us to, instead of go to home, turn on the TV, and, and uh, just watch, watch something together, we, we, we go home and we sit on the couch and we open the Bible and, and go through scriptures. Amen? So to me, that's awesome. Um, uh, you know, I don't understand. I just know that God's going to heal me one day, and I'm just holding on to that. Amen? Um, he is the healer. He has the power. Uh, I just got to do what I got to do to do what I do. <laughs> so, amen? So anyway, so it is a bit of a different uh, a ch- a challenge. Um, so basically, we, we go over the scriptures, and then we, we read them over last night again, and then we you know, go from there, right? So, so it's a little bit tricky if you're thinking about yourself not looking at the scriptures personally and then trying to remember what you're preaching on. Amen? <clears throat> so I told Brady, I said, if I run out of steam, I'm just going to call him up and he can come and fill in. Amen? <laughs> He's always got something on the, uh, on the go. So, but anyway, no, I believe the Lord is uh, with us and, uh, and I know that he has uh, brought me to this place in my life um, you know, and, and he's helped and guided me all this way. I, I, I for sure know that he has not left me because the Bible says he'll never leave us or forsake us. Amen. So once you have the Lord, you have, you have the Lord. Amen. And, uh, so, so to me, um, I'm assured of that in my heart. Uh, I was thinking about as we were preparing this message, um, on the anointing, because the anointing is a very powerful and an important thing that each and every one of us as believers and that are baptized in the Holy Spirit. So, so here's the thing when I say believers and then are baptized in the Holy Spirit because um, the anointing comes with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Amen? So it's one thing to be baptized in water for repentance, but it's a whole other thing to be baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. Amen? And so how many would agree we need the Holy Ghost and fire to accomplish what we're called to accomplish? We cannot do it without the Holy Ghost and fire. Amen? When we sang that song, you know, he set the captives free. He opens the blind eyes to see. Lame, women, lame, men, lame men walk, right? Jesus would walk around healing people. He, set the, he sent the 72 out to go heal people and set them free. And what happened? They went out and they set, they set people absolutely free. Amen? And so the power of God was in them because, he, because Jesus said, I want you to go and do this, and he released them to go and do it to show them that the power of God can work through them also with the, uh, with the of course, the anointing to say, go ahead and do it. Because if Jesus wouldn't have said, go and do it, then they would never have been able to do it. Amen? And so I want to remind you in John 14, 16, it says that, 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 that he has, uh, he has uh, sent the, he said, I'm going, to, I'm going to go, I'm going to pray that the Holy Spirit will come and anoint you, amen? To put his spirit inside of you, to be your advocate, to be your guide, to give you the strength and the power you need to do what you're called to do. So if you're a born again believer this morning, if you've asked Jesus Christ into your heart, there is so much more than sometimes we're doing. We are not to be... Uh, spectators but participators amen we we are not just to um we are not just to be a church but a church that's alive amen 
a church that's uh, going forward and, and, uh, and multiplying and increasing. And I think this, I think as we grow and as this church begins to uh, move in, in, in growth and power and signs and wonders, we will take it to the next town. And then we'll take it to the next town and the next town. Amen? Amen. We will not stop until Jesus comes back. Because I think it's important that we don't just wait for the people to come to us. We go to the people. Amen? Amen. So in the scriptures, in, in Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27, it says that, that, uh, that, that the anointing breaks the yoke. Amen? It says all these things are against you. And then it says, but the anointing will break all that off of you. Amen? So when we understand that the anointing breaks the yoke, that it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what you're involved in it doesn't matter what's going on in your life right now you you're sitting there saying how can i ever become free look at my life it's a disaster all these things are going on in my life i'm telling you right now that the anointing of god will set you free amen oh are the children, oh, the children just set free oh children they're gone Kids, are they gone, Matthew? Yeah. yeah, okay. Praise the Lord. Thanks for letting me know that after they've went. <laughs> Father, I thank you for them. I thank you for all those little children. I thank you that today, Lord, they will be set free if they're not free now. I pray, Lord, that your spirit will absolutely captivate them and lead them into that place of power and authority in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Because the anointing will break the yoke off of them. Those things that are holding them back from becoming all that God's called them to become. How many know that children are called to do great things as they grow? Did you know children can lead people to Christ? Children can lead people to Christ in, in schools. How many know the schools need Christ? In these days, the schools need Christ. Can we agree on that? Amen. Amen. That if any time in history, since they've taken the Lord's Prayer out of school, how many remember praying the Lord's Prayer in school? And now it's gone. And for years it's been gone, and it's just been going downhill in schools. Amen? And so we need to, uh, we need to, we need to know that, that our children can also bring the power of God into the schools. And the demonstrations may have them removed from school <laughs> as people are falling down, teachers... Hey Amen. Can you imagine your child going and saying, Teacher, let me pray for you in Jesus' name. Boom. And down they go. How long do you think that'll last in school? Amen? Anyway, revival in schools. Praise the Lord. It's interesting because I was listening to, um, speaking of revivals, I was listening to some stuff on Azusa Street. How many know about Azusa Street? Hallelujah. Amen for Azusa Street. Azusa Street was a great outpouring of God's presence and power. It, this will remind you, it never did stop, amen, from the book of Acts till, uh, till now. It's never stopped. The power of God has always been working and moving forwards with miracle signs and wonders to follow, amen? It's never stopped. So, so, so I don't know where that comes from, but it never has stopped. The power of God is for you and me and Bobby McGee, amen? <laughs> anyway, forget that. <laughs> you didn't get it. You probably don't even know who Bobby McGee is. Anyway, nevertheless, so, so anyway, I, I was listening to this, and I found it very interesting as they were testifying about the power of God, and uh, they said that people would be, would, would be filled with the Holy Spirit and begin to speak in tongues, and not just tongues, but it was tongues of all nationalities that were represented in the church. So it wasn't just speaking in tongues. Your prayer language that we, you and I pray in our prayer closet is one tongue, Amen. But there's another tongue that's prayed when God wants to communicate with people that don't. I could, I could speak another language, you know, whatever, Filipino, Chinese, uh, uh, German, Greek, whatever, whatever. I could speak it through my tongue if I allowed the Holy Spirit. If the, if the Holy Spirit were to, would want to use me that way, that's what would happen. And to, to show God's wonderfulness, what he would do many times, these people said, they said that, because the guy asked him, he said, what about the children? Oh, the children. Oh, the children would definitely get up, and they would just begin to preach and pray in tongues. Okay, little children would begin to pray in tongues, and it would speak to the people 
in their own language that Jesus loves them or whatever the message would be. Isn't that powerful? Can you imagine? So when we look at uh, the day of Pentecost, for instance, and the wind of the Holy Spirit blew in the upper room, the 120, they were filled with the, the, they were filled with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, amen? You guys know the story in Acts chapter 2, right? So they're filled with the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues, and it says that they spoke in all of the people because there was a big celebration in that time. Right? So there's a big celebration. All these people are coming from all over the world, and they all speak different languages. Do you hear what I'm saying? Right? So they all speak different languages. And the, and the people in the upper room, as they heard them speak, they said they spoke in their own language, in all the people that were represented there. And so that same Holy Spirit that we're hearing about in the book of Acts was happening in Azusa Street, and these young kids were getting up, and they were speaking in tongues in African and, and uh, Chinese and, and uh, Japanese and all these different languages that these kids would just start speaking. Would that not turn you from a non-believer to a believer if you heard somebody speaking in your own language? Yeah. Amen? And so people would get up and say, this little girl spoke in my language, and they would come to Christ. Because you couldn't deny it. The day that uh, a reporter showed up at Azusa Street or at, at the house where, uh, where, where some of this stuff was taking place. Because you see what happened is, is the church where Seymour was preaching, he decided one day that we need to go deeper with the Lord and we need to, we need to talk about a revival. And so he taught on revival, he taught on the gifts, he taught on the book of Acts. And the, and the, and the next, uh, next week... 13 people showed up for church. It's according to Seymour, and there's a sign on the door, we don't need your teaching. And the door was locked. So then one of the ladies said, well, let's go to my house, and we'll start services there. So the church was not interested in going further with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So they said, you know, Seymour's like, oh, he's the pastor of the church, he's locked out of the church, because well, that's what you get for a board-ran church. <laughs> Amen. Anyway, so they, uh, so, they, so they went to this lady's house, and God's power and glory began to move. A lady that, the lady had a piano but never played it before because she didn't know how. And all of a sudden, these gloves showed up on the piano. She put her hands in the gloves, and they began to play, and they began to worship the Lord. Amen? I mean, signs and wonders following where God wants to go. And, uh, and uh, a reporter one day came to the door and tried to trick them, and and this little girl answered the door, and she knew through the, through, the, through, the, through the Holy Spirit exactly what he was up to. And so he was from another country also, so she began to prophesy to him in his own native language. And that freaked him right out. And he surrendered his life right there, and he told the story that he came to discredit and tear down what God was doing. And after hearing that, there was no way that he could deny the power of God. Because that little girl would not have known his language in perfect uh, dialect. Amen? So I'm saying that because I want to say that the anointing breaks the yoke and, and we have the anointing of the Holy Spirit upon us. Amen? And I want to go to some scriptures in, in, uh, in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 16. <clears throat> so if you have your Bibles this morning, you can turn to 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse something, something. So as David stood there among his brothers, Samuel took... What verse is that? Sorry. First uh, Samuel 16, verse 13. 13, yeah, thank you. <clears throat> so as David stood there among his brothers, Samuel took his flask of olive oil he had brought and anointed David with the oil. And the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. From that day on, then Samuel returned to Ramah. So if you don't know the story, Samuel was told because King Saul was on his way out. And uh, they needed a new king, and, and David was being prepared to be king. And in order to do anything for the Lord, you need to be anointed. Amen? You can't just go around doing something and not have the power to do it, right? You can't, you can't just say, well, I'm going to do it. That's what the sons of Seba did. They went out and they began to cast demons out until the demon said, Paul, I know, and Jesus, I know, but who are you? And he beat them up so bad, they, all of them ran out of the house naked, right? So you want to know that, that the power of God is in you in order to do what God's called you to do. And, uh, and that's why, you know, here... Samuel's coming to anoint David. He takes the anointing oil. It says that the Spirit of the Lord came upon David powerfully. Amen? 
to show the sign that, 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 God, that God was with him and that he was ready to go to do what God's called him to do. Amen? Such a powerful moment. And it says that if you read, you read further on, it talks about when, when David became anointed, the Spirit of the Lord left Saul at the same time. David's anointed, the Spirit leaves Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord comes upon Saul of torment. Why did that take place? Because now David had to go and uh, get into the palace, right? Get, to, get, get his feet into the palace. And, and they said, well, maybe if we do worship, the evil spirit will leave. And they said, do you know anybody that can worship like that? And they said, well, only Jesse's son David that we know plays a harp, and he could, he could do that. So who did they call? They called David to come, and David begins to play. The evil spirit leaves, and Saul's free. Amen? Until the next time. And they keep doing this, and, and you know the story. I mean, Saul throws a spear at him and, uh, and because the enemy's trying to kill him, right? So the enemy's always trying to get what God's trying to do. Amen? So, so the enemy's always trying to destroy what God's trying to do. That's why he fills you with the Holy Spirit. He gives you the power to speak to people. Amen? He anoints you. And then somebody comes along and says, uh, who do you think you are? You're acting so holy. And then you become offended, and you decide, I'm not doing anything anymore. Instead of recognizing where the attack came from, and send the devil where he belongs, amen, out of your life. Remember, there are people that are, there are sheep dressed in wolves' clothing who are out to destroy and attack, right? Amen? We need to know that when we're filled with the Holy Spirit, that if you don't expect things to take place to attack you, then you're being deceived. Because you cannot do what God's called you to do and not be attacked. The moment that you say, Lord, come into my life and forgive my sins, you've painted a target on your back. But I'd rather have the target on my back and going to heaven than having no target on my back and going to hell. Did you know hell is talked about more in the Bible than, than heaven? Why? Because it's a real place. And we need to take it serious. Amen? And so the anointing in your life is very important, very powerful. And uh, I was going to get him to read in, in, uh, in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 17. It talks about David, and it talks about him going down and, and taking out Goliath. And we know the story, amen? I don't need to repeat the story. We know the story of David going down and taking out Goliath. He goes to Saul, and all this stuff is set up, right? And, and he puts on Saul's armor. It's too heavy, and he takes it off. And he said, I need to do what, what, what just, I just need to go fight the battle like I did fight the lion and the bear. And, and David goes, and he grabs uh, stones out of the brook, the perfect stones that have been waiting for him to come for this day, because I believe God has ordained that moment. I don't know about you, but I think those rocks were perfectly ready for him to pick up. He takes five stones, puts them in his bag, why did he pick up five stones for, for Goliath and four of his brothers? <laughs> Amen? So Goliath is yelling at him. David's not intimidated. He said, I come to you. Well, you know how Goliath says he's cussing God out and, and uh, you, the God of Israel. And David says, you know what? I, you know, and he, you know, Goliath says, I come to you and, and I'm going to tear you apart and cut you up. And, and David said, uh, you know, I come to you in the name of the Lord. So who was fighting the battle? God was fighting the battle, right? So God's using David. He's anointed him. He's got the power. That anointing's on his life. And I was thinking about this. I was thinking as David, you know, ripped up that stone in his, in, his, in his sling, and he shot that stone like a bullet. You know, a lot of those uh, helmets that they wear, and we know that, uh, that he was wearing a helmet. And I was thinking about this because the helmet sometimes would come over their nose too. And then this rock squared him in the forehead. Right? So, so David shot that rock, hit, hit Goliath right in the forehead. Goliath falls to the ground dead. Like not just a little bit dead, but dead, dead. It's powerful because you, you think about, first of all, it was the anointing that gave David the strength and the power to shoot that rock like a bullet to take out Goliath. He may have been a good shot naturally, but I'm telling you, I believe that the anointing gave him the extra strength he needed, amen, to shoot that rock harder. So I don't care if the guy had a full face shield on, 
that rock would have tore through the metal of that face shield because it would have shot like a bullet with God's power behind it. Amen? Do you agree? That God guided that rock, taking him out? Do you remember the story of Samson as Samson is walking along, going to get Delilah? And all of a sudden, a baby lion, a young, it says a young lion jumped out at him, right? So, and Samuel didn't run. He just went, what? And it says the anointing of God fell upon him. And he tore that baby lion apart like I was a young goat with his bare hands. Amen? So when the anointing of God is upon you, nothing is impossible. That's why he says, I fight your battles. The battle is the Lord's, Hallelujah. You are the child of the Most High God. You are protected and guided, and that's why you're living today to hear this message, because God has kept you alive. Amen? Amen? That's why the people that you've heard testify, they have fallen down and they've OD'd from drugs, they've, they've passed out in snowbanks or whatever's taking place with them, and they've come back to God save their lives. Amen? Why? Because he's not done with them. He's got a plan. He is praying and believing that they'll change their, their ways. Amen? That they would turn from their wicked ways and begin to serve him with all of their strength, might. Instead of challenging the world and challenging the Lord with doing whatever we want to do, why don't you challenge him by laying hands on people? Challenge him by doing what he's called you to do. Become the Christian that he's called you to become. He says, when you say Christian, you're a Christ follower. Picking up your cross and following him. Amen? Amen? It's a powerful story when you think about all the people in the Bible. Moses lifting up his hands, throwing, putting his staff across the Red Sea, and it parting. Come on, that's the power of God. Amen? That is the anointing of God on his life. You go speak to a rock and see if water comes out of it. You kick that rock and see if water comes out of it. I don't care what you do with that rock. Without the anointing, nothing's going to happen, but that rock going to maybe move. You need the anointing. You need the anointing to do what God's called you to do. We need the anointing to run a church properly. Amen? Signs and wonders following. We've had healings in this place. We've, we've had miracles in this place. We've had miracles online. How many know the greatest miracle of all is salvation? Born again, spirit-filled people. Doing what God calls you to do. Fighting the good fight. Kicking the devil in the teeth. Amen? Amen. I was just thinking about, you know, even when, uh, when Joshua was fighting and Moses was on the mountain on the hill overlooking the battle and Joshua was fighting and Moses' arms got tired so he put them down and Joshua began to lose the battle. Moses puts up his hands and they begin to win the battle again. And that's when Aaron and, and uh, somebody else helped him hold his arms up. Right? Because sometimes you need help holding your hands up when you're in a battle. Sometimes you need somebody to encourage you. Sometimes you need to let people know what you're going through so that we can pray for you, pray with you, be on your side to overcome whatever you're overcoming because you're not in this fight alone. You should never feel you're alone because first of all, the Bible says he'll never leave you or forsake you. And that's a promise. Amen? That's a promise. And so when we look at another scripture, James is like, do you want me to read anything? No. It's fine. I'm a good paraphraser sometimes when I know the scriptures. But when we go to 1 Kings, is it 1 Kings? Yeah. yeah. 1 Kings 16. Yeah, let's read that. 1 Kings 16, verse 1. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's 2 Kings or 1 Samuel? 2 Kings. Uh, no, I, I don't know. I did the 1 Samuel. I talked about David. Okay. Yeah, we'll and Goliath. And, okay. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. But then 2 Kings 16, verse 1. Yeah. 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 2 Kings 16, uh, second Kings. Second Kings. Two to nine. So this is, a, I'll just paraphrase. This is Elijah and Elisha. And Elijah and Elisha are walking along together. Remember, if, you, if you've read the story, it's in Second Kings. If you have time, read it. Elisha's walking along with Elijah, and Elijah would stop and say, okay, I got to go on to this place. You stay here. And how many know Elisha's like, ain't no way I'm staying here. I ain't missing what God's got for me. Is that right? So there's no way that he's staying. And, and so finally it comes to a place where they cross over and Elijah splits the uh, Jordan River. They walk across on dry ground. How many have seen that before? It's an old trick in Exodus. <laughs> when Moses parted the sea, Elijah's walking along. Well, there's water in our way. I don't want to get my feet wet. <laughs> the Jordan River parts. Him and Elisha walk through on dry ground. 
Elijah says, you're determined to stay with me. What is it that I can do for you? He said, I want a double portion of your spirit. He said, oh, you've asked for a big thing. He said, if you see me go, you'll receive it. Which makes sense because the anointing was on his cloak, on his jacket, on his clothes, right? So suddenly they're walking along and you know the story. The chariot of fire comes, picks up Elijah, and away goes Elijah, right? And that's why they say that Enoch was never found. They don't believe he died a physical death. And Elijah never died a physical death, as far as we know. Because he was carried off in a chariot of fire, absolutely free and alive. Real free because he lost his clothes on the way up. <laughs> I was thinking about that. I was thinking, man. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> Doesn't matter what I said. <laughs> this is strange. Can you imagine? Oh, Lord shows up. And maybe, yeah. <clears throat> anyway, so Elisha grabs the cloak. What does that mean? He's received the anointing of Elijah. And the prophets even said, ooh, he's received the anointing of Elijah. Elisha has picked up the mantle of Elijah. And so then, what does, what does Elisha do? He goes to the Jordan River because he wants to go back to the other side. He goes, he says, where is the God of Elijah? And he hits the water with the, with the coke and, the, and, the, and it's, it parts once again. And here we go across on dry ground. And all the prophets are watching this. And they say, well, where did Elijah go? Should we go look for him? And Elisha knows that there's no point in going to look for him because he's gone into heaven. Anyway, but needless to say, the, they, they keep bugging Elisha and they keep bugging him. Finally, Elisha says, okay, take 50 men and go look for him. Three days later, they come back. Yeah, we couldn't find him. He says, yeah, I told you that. <laughs> so sometimes we go and we spin our wheels wasting our time when we don't need to. Just listen to what the word is saying. Amen? If it says you can do it, you can do it. If it says you can overcome, you can overcome. Amen? All we know is that in order for Elijah to continue on with Elisha, uh, Elisha to continue on with Elijah's ministry, he needed the anointing to happen. Because you cannot do the things that God has you to do without the anointing. In order to receive the anointing, you need to say, Father, forgive me my sins. Fill me with the Holy Spirit and fire. Amen? There's nothing worse than a whole bunch of people going around saying there is no uh, power of God. Like what, what, what lies when you, when you say that there is no more Holy Spirit, that the Spirit of God doesn't fill you with fire and power, amen? That it died with the apostles. It didn't die with the apostles. Read history. History tells us that the, see, the problem is that these people refuse to read anything in Acts. They refuse to read the stories of John, uh, of Smith Wigglesworth. You know John G. Lake? Anybody know John G. Lake? Okay, John G. Lake was, a, was an evangelist back in the 1800s. And then uh, 1990, uh, I mean, 1912, or 1912, I think he's when he, when he passed away or something. Anyway, John E. Lake would go, and he was the one I've told you the story where they put a, the Ebola virus on his hand in Africa. Because they said, don't be touching these bodies. They're sick with a disease that'll kill you. And John E. Lake said, I've got the anointing. I've got the power of God in me. Here, give me some of that poison. They put it on his hand, he sticks it under a microscope, the living cells and the virus drop dead as soon as they touch his hand. Why do you think Jesus went and, come here leopard, nobody wants to touch you, I'll touch you, come and give me a hug. Hey, Amen? Do you remember when Jesus just touched a leopard? Lord, would you heal me? Would you? And Jesus said, would I? Come, come. And touched him. Because he wasn't afraid of the sickness. Why was he not afraid of the sickness? Because he had the anointing. Amen? Am I wrong or am I just reading Bible here? I'm talking about the anointing. The power that comes within you when you give your heart to Jesus Christ and you confess with your mouth that he is Lord. You have the power and the anointing on you. Johnny Lake was just demonstrating it. Amen? Um, Spawn... Uh, Spontane, Washington? Spokane. Spokane, Washington. That's where John E. Lake, uh, after he came back from Africa, he began to minister. Think about this. The city was about 100,000 people, and John E. Lake comes into town, and they said it was the healthiest city in the whole world. Not just in 
the U.S. But it was the healthiest city in the world. Why? Because God gave him a vision to start healing rooms. You know what a healing room is? It's a place where you get prayed for and Christians believe and are anointed and you become healed. Can you imagine? One person, we think about, oh, we need to have, you know, 95 churches to, he- to have uh, Yorkton set free. No, you just need one believer to share the fire and everybody receives the fire and we go heal people through the power of God. Amen? Amen. Do you hear what I'm saying? I'm saying that that anointing was not the day in the day of it was it was in the day of Pentecost or in the day of, of Pentecost with the disciples. But I'm talking this was in 1912 that this was happening. Azusa Street broke out in 1906. Amen. The power of God moving in the, in people's lives, giving them the the ability to see the sick, ra- the dead raised, the sick healed. I was thinking about something. I was thinking when we look at serendipity, we start a little prayer area. Then God dropped in my heart. He said, that's your healing house. Amen? Like, why is it that, that, that's, that's, that, that Washington can have that, but Georgetown can't? And there's healing rooms all over the world now, by the way. Why? Because God has released his spirit to heal the sick. Has he not called us to heal the sick? Did he not anoint us to set the captives free? What are we doing with the power he's given us? If we're just sitting in church, then we're just wasting our time, getting fat with God's word and not doing anything with it. When the power of the anointing breaks every yoke, every bondage, every cancer, every sickness, every depression, every disease, the fire of God can set us free. Amen? It's demonstrated from the Old Testament all the way through the New Testament. Right till Jesus comes. Amen? Amen. In Luke chapter, uh, Luke something there. Chapter 3. Yeah, Luke chapter 3. This is when Jesus goes to the water gets baptized. We know the story. He gets baptized. The Holy Ghost falls upon him. Anointing him. Anointing him to do what God's called him to do, to give him the power to do it. Amen? He needed to be anointed. And that's why he was... Ten- Look at this. Jesus gets anointed, gets baptized, having a good bath there, comes out all refreshed, full of the power of the Holy Ghost. And then the Spirit of the Lord says, come with me now, let's go into the wilderness and be tempted. And we go, I gave my heart to Christ, why am I going through this? Job said, even though you slay me, Lord, I will serve you. You can kill everything I have, and I'm going to serve you. Because nothing means anything without him. So if we're not doing it for him, then why are you doing it? Do it for the King of kings and the Lord of lords, because he's given you the power to do it. Jesus went into the wilderness, tempted for 40 days, 40 nights, and then hungry, and then he's tempted. Not just tempted, but hungry and then tempted with all these things. And then we read in Luke chapter 4, it says, Jesus is now comes out of the wilderness, goes into the temple, and he's reading the scriptures to the people. And he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the gospel and set the captives free. Amen? Blind eyes open, lame people walking. Isn't that right? That's what he says. Jesus is in the temple reading the, scroll, reading the scriptures. He said, and he's anointed me. He anointed when he was being baptized. He got anointed. You got anointed when you said, Lord, come into my life and forgive my sins. I received the power and the, and the blood of Christ to set the captives free. And if you haven't said that, today's your day to say that. Amen? Today's the day to say, you know what? I'm taking my house back. I'm taking my land back. I'm taking my car back. I'm taking everything back. No devil in hell is going to control me anymore. Remember when Jesus went to the cross, the whole earth shook. Graves opened up. Dead people came back to life and began to walk around praying for people. Christians. There you go. Dead in Christ rising up. Amen? Believers. Amen? I lost track of where I am now. Luke chapter 4, 18, and then what? Uh, Acts. Oh, Acts chapter 3. Let's go there for a moment. Acts chapter 3. We talk about the, the John, uh, Peter and John come to the gate of beautiful. Silver and gold I don't have, but what I have I give to you. What happened there? 
They just finished coming out of the Pentecostal time, right, where, 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 where 120 people were filled with God's power. Do you remember when they had manual steering? Do you remember how hard it was to turn that thing? Weren't you grateful when they came with power steering? You went from two, using two hands to just take a corner to using one little finger to make a corner. Why? Because you were manually assisted by yourself, doing it all on your own, and now you're power assisted. You are power assisted people. We are power assisted by the Holy Ghost. It's not your strength, because the Bible says the battle is the Lord's. He says, I fight your battles. So quit trying to fight the battle and let the Holy Spirit lead you into battle. Like Jehoshaphat, when he said, Lord, you lead this fight. And the Lord says, greatly, I will. And what do they do? They get to the battle as they're worshiping, all dressed up in their warrior gear, get to the battle and everyone's dead. They just killed each other. Amen? Why? Because the Lord can cause confusion in your enemy's mind. It's kind of like, it's kind of like the, the, the Christian who's working the 7-Eleven somewhere, and uh, a guy comes in and points a gun in the person's face. He says, give me the money. He says, in Jesus' name, I will not. And the guy looks confused. <laughs> I, got, I got a gun in your face. In Jesus' name, get out of here. And the guy drops his gun and runs away. And they got him. You know why they got him? Because his fingerprints were on the gun. <laughs> Should have taken it with him. <laughs> but, but that's a demonstration of confusion. When, they, when the Lord confuses you, the enemy, he, the enemy doesn't know what to do. That's a true story. These are testimonies. By the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimonies. I'm going to Mooseman on the 6th to share my testimony for 10 minutes because my dad's taking the rest of the time. I mean, that's awesome, yeah, amen. I haven't heard my dad's testimony in 15 years. Amen? It's going to be a good one at the full gospel of Mooseman. If you can make it on the 6th, it's a long ways to go, but it's worth it. It's a great testimony. Somebody said to me, he said, what, what does your dad look like? I said, if you see me, you see my father. <laughs> Amen. <clears throat> the anointing. The anointing is a powerful thing. In Acts chapter, uh, in the next Acts, there, uh, Acts what? <laughs> Praise God. Uh, Acts 19. Yeah. Are you, are you okay if I keep just paraphrasing? Oh, yeah. Okay. I just didn't know if you sounded kind of sad about it there or not. <laughs> James is an awesome reader. Thank you, James. Acts chapter 19. <laughs> now I need you to read that. <laughs> At least get me going. Acts chapter 19, James. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul traveled through the interior regions until he reached Ephesus mm. on the coast, where he found several believers. Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? He asked them. <laughs> no, they replied. We haven't heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then what baptism did you experience, he asked. And they replied, the baptism of John. How much clearer does it have to be? How much clearer does it have to be that the power of God is still at work today? The disciples are, Paul's like, what baptism do you have? Well, I have the baptism of John for repentance. Yeah, that's great. You're going to go to heaven. Praise God. Let's say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We're going to heaven. Amen? Amen. Have you asked Jesus Christ into your life and you've repented and you were baptized? Woo! -hoo, you're going to heaven. Praise God. But you're leaving everybody else behind. Because you're just baptized for you. And yet you can have the power to go and baptize other people in the name of Jesus Christ. He says, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. How does he pour out his spirit upon all flesh? By you laying your hands on them. Isn't that what happened if you continue to read? Paul said, well, you need the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire. The baptism of repentance is good because you're going to heaven. But you're not going to be any earthly good if you don't have the power to do what God's called you to do. How many know the power is important? Say the power is important. 
If it wasn't important, it wouldn't have been offered to us. That's like saying, here's a gift, and you say, no, I don't want it. That's terrible. What a terrible thing to have the ability to see people set free, blind eyes open, lame people walking. We watched it. Silver and gold I don't have, but what I have, I give to you. And the lame man jumped up and began to walk. And I just talked about Spokane, Washington, having healing rooms. It's the healthiest city in the whole world, at least back then. Why? Because of the anointing. The anointing breaks the yoke. The anointing is spread like wildfire when you lay hands on the people. Amen? And that's what Paul did. Paul went and laid hands on them. And it says, they were, what, what happened? Let's read that. If you still have it there. Yep. We'll just take a second. This is what happened. Paul laid hands on them. Uh, yeah. Paul said, John's baptism called for repentance from sin, but John himself told the people to believe in the one who would come later, meaning Jesus. As soon as they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then, when Paul laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in other tongues and prophesied. Amen? Not that they just speak in tongues. They're, they're filled with the Holy Ghost. They're speaking in tongues and beginning to prophesy. Prophesy, people. Who was the last person you prophesied over? Have you thought about prophesying over yourself? Saying, I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. Speaking words of knowledge and wisdom. We talked about it in, we were reading James last week on Bible study. Speaking wisdom, you guys. Hallelujah. Praise God. I don't know about you. Do you want to go back to manual steering? Or do you want to just have power steering assistance? Amen? Did you know you hear these stories and we look at Azusa Street and the fire department was called because neighbors were calling because the place was on fire. Fire department gets there, gets saved probably, but there was no fire. Just Holy Ghost fire. But they'd look and they could see it burning. And you say, wow, that can't be. What about the Acts chapter 2 when the tongues of fire were on each one of them? Somebody must have been in heaven counting one, two, three, 120. <laughs> and then they say, you know, you need to be in one accord. Have you ever seen a church in one accord? <laughs> well, one thing we can all be come in one accord in is that we need the bap baptism of the Holy Ghost in fire. Amen? You can, we can all agree that you need the anointing to do anything for the kingdom. It's all the way through the Bible. We've read Old Testament. We've read New Testament. The only way you can do anything is with the baptism of the, the Holy Spirit and fire. We need the anointing. Is that right? Amen, church? We need the anointing. What was my next scripture? Are you doing okay? <clears throat> Jeremiah 1 to 9. Jeremiah 1 to 9. This is talking about Jeremiah. You know, we read it often because it's such a powerful scripture. It says that Jeremiah you know, was rejecting the Lord, and the Lord says, no, you say what, I'm, what I tell you to say is what you say. And he says, he put, he, put, he put God's word in his mouth. Amen? He anointed him, put his word in his mouth. He said, you will tear down kingdoms, and you will build kingdoms. What kingdom are you tearing down? I don't know about you, but I'm tearing down Satan's kingdom. I'm tearing down the things that the enemy's trying to build up. And I can't do it without the power of God to help me. Amen? You try doing that on your own strength, you're going to get a beating. But when God's on your side, nothing is impossible. That's why he told Jeremiah, he said, just do what I tell you to do. I've anointed you to be a prophet to the nations. You're going to build kingdoms. You're going to tear down kingdoms. Amen? And then we go to 2 Chronicles 7.14. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray... And seek my face. You should hear from heaven. Amen? Are we his people? What are you praying for? What are we praying for? Are we praying for more? I don't know about you, but I want to see my family and that family and that family absolutely set free. Amen? I want to see the power of God move in signs and wonders like never before. I think it's time that the church started stepping into the Great Commission, don't you? Would you agree that we need to begin to do the Great Commission, go into all the world, preach the gospel, lay hands on the sick, see them healed? 
Not your power, but his power. His power working through you to do what God's called you to do. Look at all these religions, all these things that are rising up amongst us in this world. Can I remind you that the disciples did not walk around with Bibles, they listened to the Holy Spirit. You need to allow the Holy Spirit to lead you. Read your Bible so you have the word inside of you, of course. But have an ear to the Holy Spirit. Well, I can't really. Then begin to fast and pray. The Holy Spirit wants to talk to you. He's your, he's your friend. He's your advocate. What good is a lawyer if he doesn't want to talk to you? Yeah, I'm going to hire this lawyer because I'm going to court, but uh, I ain't talking to him. <laughs> So he's not talking to you. You're not talking to him. But he's supposed to defend you. Isn't that what Jesus said? I'm going to send the advocate, the Holy Spirit. The advocate means the lawyer, basically, right? Someone who will advocate on your side, who will guide you and, and direct you in, into, into your issues and problems. Wouldn't you, don't you want the Holy Spirit to tell you what's coming? Amen? This is a really quiet Presbyterian church. Sometimes I wonder where the Holy Ghost is in our lives. Even in myself. From where I was when I, f I remember very clearly falling on my face and just crying out to the Lord. Going into days and days of fasting and praying. Why did I do that? Because I wanted to hear the heart of the Lord. I wanted him to guide and direct me. I was thinking, how am I ever going to do these messages or preach without being able to read the word myself and, and look at it and, and see those words. And how am I going to remember the scriptures? And as Joanne was reading them to me, it was like popping into my heart. Because the word of God is in your heart. Because God has chosen you to fight this good fight. I'm telling you this story because the power of God is real. And it's time for the it's time for the born-again believers, the people that say that they believe in Jesus Christ to rise up and become who God's called them to become. Don't just come to church. Come to church with a purpose. Amen? A church, a purpose-driven church is great, but a Holy Ghost-driven church is better. Amen? Can you imagine if all of us begin to come in agreement, Tuesday night we'll pack this place out. Why? Because we're hungry. If you, got the, if you got the TV on on Tuesday night, ask yourself, why are you there watching TV when you could be here praying, receiving clarity from the Lord? You tell me about your problems, and I'll tell you the solution. You tell me the devil's attacking you, all hell's coming against you, I'll tell you what you need to do. And it starts with drinking water, not eating. Because here's the thing. You can come to us, and the prayer team can surround you, they can pray for you, they can encourage you, they can lift you up. But if you don't learn to stand on your own two feet... Give a man a fish, you'll feed him for the day. Teach a man to fish, you'll feed him for a lifetime. I'm telling you how to stay in tune with the Holy Spirit and power. I'm telling you that if you've asked Jesus Christ in your life, you are anointed and the fire of God is upon you, amen? And nothing is impossible for you. Say, nothing is impossible for me. Let's do that again like we mean it. Nothing is impossible for me. Amen. The enemy needs to hear you. You say, well, he's not deaf. But the authority comes within you. Why do we yell at our children, but you don't yell at the devil? <laughs> huh? I yell at Milo. Like, well, come on. He eats pies. And, and then you go home and he looks like Igor. For me. Right? That old, you say, he's too old to get onto the stove. No, no, he can get, either the cat's helping him or he can get onto the stove. I don't know which one it is. I think that crazy cat jumps up there and knocks into the edge so he can reach it. And he gets in trouble and the cat's like. 
Just laughing it up. Huh? How does a fat dog like that get up on a stove? <laughs> Amen? You know what it is? It's because he sees something he likes and he goes after it. Do you love Jesus? Then go after him. Like the woman with the issue of blood, 12 years spent all her money, tried everything in the world to, to accomplish something, and all she had to do was just find Jesus and go after him. And she was set free from that moment. Blind Bartimaeus on the side of the road with a begging coat on, for years laying there, sitting there begging for money. Jesus has come, and he's like, I'm not living like this anymore. I want the power of God to touch me. Amen? Throws off that, that begging coat. because he. But in those days, the government gave you permission to beg if you had a reason to. And they, you wore this coat to say, I'm a legal beggar. And blind Bartimaeus is like, have mercy on me. Began to cry out. And they're telling him to shut up. And he's louder than they were than he was before. So when t- people tell you that they don't want to hear from you or the enemy lies to you and tries to discourage you, you say, get behind me, Satan, I'm going forward because I know that he that's in me is greater than he that's in the world. I carry the power of the Holy Spirit. I have the fire of God dwelling inside of me. The fire is burning. Light that fire inside of yourself. Amen? Stir up the fuel. Amen. And sometimes all you have to do is just think about what the enemy did to you last week and you'll stir the fire up again. Amen? Keep hot. Keep burning like, like raging fire. Amen? Amen. Anyway, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a hand this morning. Can you stand with me this morning? Can you repeat after me? Say, Father, I thank you for your Holy Spirit. I thank you for the power that it gives me to overcome. I am an overcomer. He that is in me is greater than he that's in the world. You said in Genesis that the serpent would be under our feet, and he is. You said your son would crush his head, and he did. You've given us the power to see blind eyes open, lame people walk. Lord, I thank you for your spirit and your power in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.